Hey Geometry, in this video we're going to be talking about tangent lines. We have two rules when we have tangent lines. One rule, the first one, deals with angles. So whenever we have an example problem that has angles, most likely we're going to be able to use rule number one. Rule number one says that tangent lines, and so again this line down here as we discussed is called the tangent line. It is perpendicular, means it intersects at 90 degrees to a radius or a diameter when they meet at a certain point. And that point specifically is the point of tangency. So in this picture here, I have a radius. A radius that hits the edge of the circle exactly where the tangent line hits as well. Those two are always going to be perpendicular. That angle measure is always going to be 90 degrees. The second rule is when I have two intersecting tangent lines. And so in this picture, the tangent lines aren't truly drawn out all the way. If I have two lines here, this is a tangent line, this is a tangent line, they intersect at a point. When this occurs, those points of intersection right here is going to be equidistant, which means equal and distant to the point of tangency. And remember, the point of tangency is where the tangent line touches the circle. And to say this a little bit more simply, it's the fact that these two sides are always going to be the same length. And so I think of this as a, in a funny way as a person wearing a party hat. And the sides of the party hat are going to be the same. So again, in the previous rule, we dealt with angles. Here, we're dealing with sides. So angles and sides, two completely different types of problems, two completely different rules that we'll be able to use. So on the next page here, we've got some example problems. One over here. We have what looks like the person wearing the party hat, but we have to notice that we're dealing with angles instead. So in dealing with angles, we know that we want to think about the rule. Tangent line is perpendicular to the radius. Given angles, we use rule one. Well here, we're given angle values, so we're going to use the first rule. I know that my radiuses, or my radii, are perpendicular to the tangent lines. What I want to think about now, from the previous material that we've learned, we know that a four-sided figure, the sum of those four angles is going to be 360 degrees. So I know that if I take x and I add all of those values that I know, all four pieces that are going to be equal to 360 degrees. That information is going to help me solve for my missing value. So x plus 220 is going to equal 360. Subtract 220 from both sides, we get that x is 140. Same process for number two. We have a tangent line, we have angle measures. So again, we're going to use the fact that the diameter, or we think of just the radius, is perpendicular to that tangent line. Well, now I have a three-sided figure. I have a triangle. I know the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180, so x plus 90 plus 36 is 180. x plus 126 is 180. Subtract 126 from both sides, we get that x equals 54. Skipping 3, 4, 5, and 6, I'm going to move down to number 8 over here. Now we're dealing, again, we still have tangent lines. We have side lengths. So going back, we're going to think about what happens when we have side lengths. Those sides are going to end up being congruent. What it means to have a polygon circumscribe a circle, in parentheses here I say that it fits perfectly around it. So this polygon, this triangle, which is a three-sided, three or more sided figure, closed straight lines, that makes it a polygon, it touches this circle, each side of the polygon is touching the circle. So it's circumscribed, it fits perfectly snug around the circle. Question is, what is the perimeter of the polygon? How big all the way around this triangle? So I have to think about all of these missing pieces. Well, I know that the sides of the party hat, if we want to think about it, are going to be congruent. So if this is 22, so is this. If this is 9, so is this. If this is 15, so is this. What I have now, I've filled in all of my missing pieces. 
I can add all of these values up and get 92 centimeters as my perimeter. Another thing I could have done is I could have added these two pieces, these two pieces, and these two pieces to find the three sides of the triangle and added those three values and I would have still gotten 92. Example number nine is a little bit different because now instead of being given just pieces, I give, I'm given an entire side. So still, the polygon is circumscribing the circle, so fitting all the way around. This time we have a four-sided figure, and I still want to know what the perimeter is. Going through our missing pieces, this is three because this one's three. These two sides are the same. Here we go with five, and from here to here is also five. I need to know what goes on this corner here. My entire side is seven, but from here to here is five, so that leaves two for this missing piece and two for this missing piece. Going all the way around, if this whole thing is seven, I could think about this side as a whole, nine, this side as a whole, seven, and this side as a whole, five. Either I can add the big side values up or all of the little pieces up one or the other but not both and if I add those I find 28 inches